My name is Brian Cook. I'm the Automation Product Manager and I'm here to talk about the MVX7100. Um, what's nice about the MVX7100 is it's really a unique system in the market. Uh, what we have here is a combination of pieces to create the MVX7100 microliter workstation. Um, the first piece we have here is going to be the full height syringe. And what's really interesting about this is we use this as the peristaltic pump replacement for the ICPMS. What that allows you to do is it allows you to get a stable uh, flowing rinse uh, on your ICPMS to feed your ICPMS, which enables you to lower your baseline. Because, of course, a peristaltic pump is going to have uh, fluctuations as the heads turn around, where you're going to get a nice stable flow with the, uh, um, the syringe pump here that we use. On the other side, we have the valve syringe module portion of the MVX7100. Uh, what we have here is we have a six port valve for a flow injection system. And what's nice about a flow injection system is this allows you to put your sample volume aliquot into a loop here. And then as it's being injected into the ICPMS, you can actually continue your rinse procedure. So it actually allows you to do two rinses at one time, which helps increase your throughput. What's unique with this setup is we also have an additional syringe here on the valve syringe module. What this allows us to do is it allows us to actually have aliquot control of our sample. So what we're able to do is we're able to control how much volume we're putting into that sample loop and with our software we're able to actually control what types of aliquots. Um, and as I'll get into as we talk a little bit about the applications for this place, it allows you to have samples segmented with air or reagents. So it uh, allows some advanced sample handling uh, introduction for your ICPMS. And then of course the, the head of this is going to be your MVX7100 which is an advanced automation system we have here at Teledyne SeaTac. Uh, what's really nice about this is we're able to run down to 384 well micro titer plates and the, reason, the ability that uh, we have to do that is based on the fact that we use encoders. Uh, what encoders do is they give us a, a positioning uh, information of our automation at all time. So as we're moving and when we reach that destination we can define where that is so we know if we're actually within our performance criteria. Another unique thing for the MVX7100 as compared to some of our traditional automation systems is we actually have a lead screw driven Z-Drive. This allows us to do septum piercing applications uh, where perhaps you're working with volatile elements or uh, you know, radioactive material, anything that you would kind of want to keep contained uh, inside of a septa. Um, some of the applications uh, that are, are really interesting with the MVX7100 are um, going to be clinical applications is one we're really investigating right now. And, and the reason this is useful for them is this is taking a traditional customer who has always used a lot of HPLC or GC um, MS uh, technologies. Well, all their traditional workflows are going to be based on these smaller uh, well plates. So we have a 96 well plate compatibility, we have a 384 position well plate compatibility, and then we have the VT54 uh, rack, which would be your standard 2 mil HPLC vials. And then we also have a, a rack for the geochem industry that is a, a 48 position PFA rack uh, for HF applications. But a lot of these clinical um, labs actually have automated sample handling systems which uh, allow them to prep their samples, their QC, and their standards all on one of these well plate formats. Um, our, a traditional automation system isn't really set up for this. Uh, even these tall 96 well plates right here, these only hold about one milliliter of volume. Um, so what we're able to do with this is we can have, reduce the amount of sample that's needed to be prepared. Uh, you can also reduce the amount of reagent that you're needing to prepare and, and still get that same, uh, same results and same, same data that you're used to getting, if not actually improve it by using the uh, syringe pump to replace the peristaltic pump action that you would typically be feeding your ICP or ICPMS with. Um, we also have an option here for the Peltier rack module. This allows you to do tempering. It ranges from about 5 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. And again, this allows you to temper your samples. So if you're working with organic solvents that may be volatile, volatile elements, or you're working with proteins, uh, metal tagged proteins, you need to keep them in their, their natural state to do your uh, analysis on. Um, 
so those are some of the really unique features of this. And the clinical market is really grabbing a hold of this, and the reason for is this allows them to simplify their workflow. So instead of having to prepare all their, all their samples by one type of sample preparation method and then go back and prepare them with an 8 mil vial that they would be using on ICPMS, they can actually streamline their workflow so that they're using the same well plate format across all of their instrumentation. And of course in, in the medical and clinical labs, what's also uh, great for them is the reduced sample. If you're working on, say, infant blood or anywhere where you're going to have a reduced sample volume, Obviously, it's easier to get much easier to get uh, uh, your data out of that and to get more reads out of that. Also, since those are going to have bio, it's going to be biohazard material. Since you're going to have your bloods, your serums, um, your urines on there, something you have to dispose of. So this actually allows you to reduce your disposal cost because you don't have to pay for as much either acid disposal or biohazard disposal because uh, you're just reducing the amount you're actually preparing. We have the ability to run the 2 mil HPLC vials, so we can do a septum piercing on the 2 mil HPLC vials. For the well plates, we have the ability to do the septum piercing on the silicone septum with a PTFE lining, or if you prefer, we also have the thin film Teflon septum uh, that you can use for the, the piercing application. Depends on if you want to have that be resealable or if it's a one-time shot and you don't need you don't need to uh, worry about setting those samples for an additional run. Um, across the back here you'll notice we have a position. We have six positions for reagents. Um, this allows us to do in-loop chemistry. So with our advanced software you can actually take and choose to have an air loop or an air slug followed by a sample slug, maybe one another 10 microliter air slug, then you can put in, let's say you have a Triton X in your first reagent, you could actually pull up you know, 50 microliters or something of Triton X, which is very useful in the clinical lab so that you can help wash that out as you're feeding that into the ICPMS. Uh, so it really allows you to do some advanced things that's really unique on the market. Right now there's no other automation system out there that is able to do septum piercing, 384 and 96 well plates along with a uh, metal-free uh, flow pathway with the ICPMS. So that's going to be your flow pathway starting at the uh, baseline syringe. So you're going to pull your sample volume up here, and it's then going to feed through your six-port valve and into the ICPMS. When we are in the load, or when we're in the inject position, the sample loop is in the pathway, and when we're in the load position, we are bypassing the valve going from one position to the next and feeding it directly into the ICPMS. So this is how your typical analysis would start out. You would be running your syringe into your ICPMS feeding between two positions on your six port valve. While that's moving, while that's uh, pumping into the ICPMS, we're going to take our automation system, we're going to go out, we're going to pull up a small air slug, and then we're going to pull up our sample, and then we're going to pull up a larger air slug, it's going to pull up from the sample needle through the six port valve into the sample loop which will be on the middle here. What the, what's really unique about this is that a traditional automation system has a, a pull through method so you have a lot of dead volume pulling from a sample probe all the way into your ICPMS by your peristaltic pump. All that is going to be volume that's going to be lost as you start and finish your analysis. With this system all we have to do is load a small volume into the sample loop, we switch the valve, and then it puts that in the flow pathway for that full height syringe. It then pushes the sample with the air slugs out into your ICPMS. Now what the air slugs do is they help provide a really um, high rising and, and quick dropping, quick rinsing signal. So you get a good leading and trailing edge to your ICPMS. And, and why that's useful is a, a traditional automation system, again, would use a pull-through method, so you're going to have your sample followed by your diluent or rinse solution right after that. And what happens is you're going to have diffusion of that sample into your rinse, which creates an extended washout. By using that small slug of air at both the beginning and the end, we able, we're able to create a washout. It creates like the squeegee effect on the inside of the tubing, which really helps push that out and drive down that rinse. We're able to rinse with much less volume and much more effectively. 
Also, to chase after uh, different applications, we have the ability to run two independent rinse solutions here. So with this dual rinse, we can have this set up to have a clean and a dirty rinse. So we could have one of these pumping maybe a little higher concentration nitric acid to really try and clean it, and then maybe one that's a weaker or a cleaner um, acid. And this can be useful for help saving cost. If you know you're running some really nasty samples, you can pump a little bit of the strong acid that's maybe a little bit cheaper, uh, but maybe a little contaminated with your metals for your high flowing rinse. And then you can have uh, with your double distilled acid on your clean rinse, so you're able to save some, some money there by not having to pump that, that high quality acid across your rinsing solution all the time. Uh, what's really nice about this system is we have one line that feeds out to your host computer, which will be the same computer as your ICPMS, and then we have one um, power line coming in. So what we have on the back of this, you can see we feed the power into our power supply brick here, and then we feed our communication into our automation. Then all commands for the accessory modules are passed down here into this accessory block which transmit both power and communication to the additional modules here. So all we actually have plugged in is one power line coming into our automation workstation and then we have one USB line feeding out to our, uh, our host computer which would be the same computer as your ICPMS. If you're using a automation workstation system without integration into the OEM uh, ICPMS software, then you also have one connector here for your triggered interface. So how the triggered interface works is we send a signal to the ICPMS software letting them know that they should start to gather data. This is typically used on laser abrasion and other advanced introduction systems. So this allows it to work with a lot of different automation systems. For systems that are integrated into the host OEM software, you don't need to have this triggering cable. You'll actually only need to have the one cable, which is going to be a USB feeding into your host computer, and then you'll just have one power cord coming out into your plug. One unique thing with our MBX7100 microliter workstation is it ships with our advanced scripting software. So what we did with the software is we tried to create a software package that doesn't constrain anyone to use their automation workstation in a specific way. What that means is this allows you to control each one of these components individually. So we're able to command each one of these to do what we want. This allows us to do kind of some ad ad advanced items. Uh, you can add additional syringes and VSMs. So we could try and use this to target um, on-column chemistries, uh, in the future perhaps some seawater analysis. Um, it's a really unique option that we have to be able to control all these individually so that our advanced users can go out and, and can get creative with how they want to use this. We've even had some users who take this and will use this as a little bit of a sample prep station where they'll actually take the pull up a volume of, like, of, of sample from one of these reagents, dispense it into a vial, and then dispense behind it some diluent. Then they'll take the syringe, they'll pull that back up and dispense it back down, which allow, actually allows them to mix their samples in the well plate and then run that for analysis. Um, with this system, we also do an alignment procedure when we first connect this up. So they're able to hit the 384 well microtiter plates. I, I don't have the number offhand, I think it's five or six millimeters across for those. So you need to have really good positional accuracy and you need to make sure your system is aligned if you're going to run those, those small uh, well plates. Um, the standard system includes everything you see here minus this rack. We have a, a non-temperature controlled rack for the base unit. The one accessory you see here is going to be the Peltier rack module. We use Peltier technology to heat or cool samples from 5 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius. The VT54 rack that you see here that holds the 2 mil HPLC vials is actually an aluminum block so that we can transfer the heat or the cool to the samples effectively. For the well plates they just sit on here so you're really just cooling that plate in the bottom of that to the temperature that you have set.
So with the system, since we have a, a, a flexible and, and modular system, this actually allows you to position your valve syringe module on either side of your automation workstation, which is very helpful because, of course, some, auto, some ICPMSs are, would be what we call right or left-handed. So is there sample introduction method on the right or left-handed ICPMS? Well, this allows us to be flexible. And we can take this off, place it on this side, and you can see all you have to do to move those. Take that off. Then you connect it back up. Now you're ready to work with an ICPMS with the opposite orientation of their sample introduction. Any other questions? Uh, the dual rinse stations that control the single peristaltic pump, and can you have two different solutions in it uh, in the gravity drain, or, or do you have a single solution going with both? So you can actually configure this dual rinse station to, to work either way. We have a two-channel peristaltic pump on the back of the instrument. So you can either feed each system, each of those two rinse stations independently with different rinse solutions. We also ship it with the ability to feed both of them from the same rinse reservoir and then have a uh, peristaltic pump drain. If you do use the two solutions, the two independent solutions, you will need to use the gravity drain option. Yes, so the MVX7100 microliter workstation is uh, able to both send and receive triggers. So if you're doing a unique application where you want to send a trigger out to this piece of equipment, you can. Also, if your ICPMS supports both uh, sending and receiving triggers, then you can actually use bidirectional triggering uh, on those applications uh, that allow it. So one of the unique things about the MVX7100 microliter workstation is we have a non-metallic flow pathway, uh, which for a septum piercing application for low volume is really unique. So we have a quartz sample probe, which goes through a peak bulkhead into PFA tubing, which goes to a PFA valve, which goes through more PFA tubing, and then we have another CTFE valve. So all these components are going to be non-metallic flow pathways. We do have uh, the glass syringe barrels, but we actually ensure that we never pull sample into the syringe barrels by using a loop that is larger than the syringe when we pull that up. Of course, for the baseline solution, you're going to be pulling your rinse through there, but that's not really an issue because that's going to be your clean rinse solution. It would just be high samples that you wouldn't really want to put into your um, syringe, uh, your syringe barrel. All right, so we have the ability to run multiple different uh, flow rates. Obviously, we set that in the, the software. So with this, we're able to do flow rates down to around one micro or five microliters a minute, and we can do flow rates greater than one milliliter per minute, which is going to exceed most ICP or ICPMS um, needs. Um, we also have various uh, syringe barrels for both the full height and the half height syringe. It ships with a two and a half mil syringe on the full height syringe and a 1.25 mil syringe on the half height syringe.